Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Systems Level 6, Boundary and Initial Conditions. Um, we're going to be tracking what comes in and out of a system. So if you haven't watched the video on inputs, outputs, and processes, you might want to do that. We're going to be tracking inputs and outputs of a system. Uh, and also, we're going to start with the system. What are the initial conditions and what are the boundary conditions? And we'll define those in just a second. Um, the object that represents systems is going to be this gray box with some components on the inside. And so how the boundary of this is made is the boundary conditions. Is it an open system? Is it a closed system? And then the initial conditions are what's in the system to start? What's outside the system? What can flow into the system? So we really are adding this idea of time to inputs, processes, and outputs. And so we'll put this over here so we can remember that. After you watch this video, you should be able to look at define boundary and initial conditions in a system like a marble run, or in physics we would use this in conservation of momentum. But I'm going to start by showing you um, inputs, outputs, boundary, and initial conditions in a simple game called Six in the House. So the game uh, rules are fairly simple. What I'm going to do is roll dice, and if the dice match the spot on the table board, it can move here. Um, as more dice come across, they can push those over to the house board, and the goal is to fill the house board with one die in each space. And so to start, let me set up what are called the boundary and initial conditions. Okay, so I've defined the system as this game of six in the house. The system is going to be this table. Um, the inputs will come from the cup. I'm going to roll the dice and figure out do they make it to the table board or not. And then the goal is get it into the house. So the boundary conditions is right here. So this is an open system. That means that when I roll the dice, um, dice can come into the system and can go out of the system. So those are the boundary conditions. It's either going to be just tell me about the boundary of the system. Is it open or closed? And then the initial conditions are going to be the numbers. And so my initial conditions in the cup is going to be 12 dice since there are 12 dice in the cup. My initial conditions on the table would be zero, and then my initial conditions in the house would be zero because there's no dice over here. Now this game would be really easy to win if your initial conditions were six and these were already filled up, but it wouldn't be much of a game. So let me play this game and then we'll see how our, our conditions change. Okay, now we need to keep track. You can see that I didn't win. I got four in the house, but I didn't get six in the house. So let me talk about the final conditions. So we can kind of work backwards. So since my uh, initial was zero and my final is four, that means the outputs, in other words, what has left the system is four dice have left the system. If we will look at what's entered the system, what's entered the system, well, since we had 12 to begin with and we ended up with, with two, that means 10 have entered the system. How many are here? There's six dice in the system. Why aren't there 10? Because four of them have moved over here. Now you could imagine if we started the game with a different configuration, if we started it with an open system but different initial conditions, we would have different amounts that would be able to move across. And also randomness is going to have something to do with it. And so this is the first setup. All we're doing is, number one, defining the system, the inputs, and the outputs. And don't forget, we always have to define what's the initial conditions. Then we can figure out the final conditions. And then finally, we can figure out what's input into the system and what moves out of the system. This is dice now, but it can eventually become things like carbon in different spheres on the planet. So let me set up the second one. And then I'll let you uh, look through it and try to figure out what are the initial boundary conditions in this game. Okay, for the second one, we're going to play a game that you're probably familiar with called Solitaire, except this is a simpler version called Mini Solitaire. So that's the system we're dealing with. I'm going to try to move cards from the stock 
to the table and eventually if all the cards up and end up in the foundation then you win and the rules I'll put down below and so let me set it up so cards will be able to move from the stock over to the foundation assuming I can get the matches going on here um, what I would encourage you to do is pause the video right now define what is the boundary condition and also I would set up in the stock, the table, and the foundation, list each of those initials, and then unpause the video and let's make sure we sync up. So I've defined this as an open system since cards can move through it. Um, my initial stock is just six cards. I've got six on the table and zero in the foundation. So watch me play the game and then try to figure out what are the conditions or the final conditions. Okay, so try to figure out what are the final conditions and then let's see if we match up. So I had a final of zero in the stock, a final of zero on the table, and a final in the foundation of 12. So my inputs into the system would be six cards and my outputs out of the system would be 12 cards. Now let me set it up again and let's just change our initial conditions from six to one and see what happens. So we can see that by changing our initial conditions, even though the cards in the system were six at the beginning, we got a way smaller outcome at the end. And so those are boundary and initial conditions. Remember, the first thing you should always do is define the system. And is that system an open or a closed system? Then figure out what are all your initials in the inputs, outputs, and system, and then kind of figure out what goes in and out of the system. So now that you've done that, I would encourage you to try one of the problems below. So we've got a marble run you could try using the thinking slides or even conservation of momentum. So that's boundary and initial conditions. It's a really good way to just start accounting what's going in and out of the system. Very useful, especially in, in climate or in physics or in energy. Um, but that is initial and boundary conditions, system six, and I hope that was helpful.